try that and see how it works. <laughs> well, welcome to um, March 31st, 2013, Easter Sunday. And I'm glad that Jana took the path that she took because um, I didn't go that path. <laughs> so so I, I'm going to, I was going to, when you get ready to give a talk, um, think of alphabet soup. Have you ever had alphabet soup? Mm -hmm. You look in the bowl and here's all these letters and they're all jumbled up. <laughs> and when you're a kid, you might try to spell something with them and if not, you're hungry, you just go ahead and eat them. So when I put my talks together, it's like an alphabet soup because there's so many different ideas that are out there and they're all in this big bowl and they're all kind of whirling around and I might put my spoon in there and try to catch one and bring it out and sometimes I'm lucky and sometimes I'm even luckier. <laughs> so here we are, now this to me seemed kind of strange, um, well not strange, it's just the way it is. Our theme in March is forgiveness and our theme in April is transformation. So here we are on Easter Sunday on the borderline and we have, both, we have both things happening. We have transformation and we have forgiveness. So for me, when I use that word forgive, I forgive you or I forgive, to me that's an opportunity for what? Forgiving what? Forgiving love for being accepting as to what has happened and just say, it's okay. I'll, I love you anyway. Or, or I love myself. Even though I got a ticket and I chose to pay the bail and not have it go on my record, I made that choice. Was I happy with it? Well, I forgave myself. I'm only human. And I think the officer that day, somebody must have put beer in his Cheerios or something because he was in a really rotten mood. So I think he was just picking on me. Just picking on me. So, um, forgiveness. So, so one thing, uh, another thing that Jesus said when in his last moments was, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Now, how often is that that we go through life and we're doing things and we don't really know what we're doing? And sometimes we don't know why we're doing it, but we're just doing it. And we're plugging along, plugging along, day in, day out. Here we are, plugging along. So, um, I was kind of thinking, how, how am I going to take all of this and put it into a neat little, neat little package for today? And uh, I came up with three things. Compassion, love, and forgiveness. Now, I came to these because one of the things I was going to do, I was going to say, what do you want from life? But we always ask ourselves that, what do we want from life? That's kind of wore out. And then I thought, well, what if we ask the question, what do we need from life? Well, we've kind of covered all that too. But then I asked myself the question, what does life around me need from me? And that's when I came up with compassion, love, and forgiveness. So, <clears throat> it's Easter Sunday, and I brought my Easter basket. It's <laughs> quite small, Jeff. <laughs> you have big expectations. You know, little candies go right through here, so the little candies aren't going to work today. But here's my Easter basket. So, oh, look. <laughs> when we're searching for answers to things, you know, we used to term, you have to turn a lot of stones over. Well, lo and behold, look, I turned the stone over and there's some wisdom on the back of it. Isn't that great? And this says, out of the abundance of your heart, cultivate love and compassion for all. And guess who said that? The Buddha. You know what? I'm going to put that in my Easter basket. <laughs> And look, oh look, there's an egg by it too. <laughs> oh. And you know what? This is a special kind of egg. Have you ever seen a Chinese fortune egg? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. I never realized that the Chinese are so creative. They don't only put them in cookies, they put them in eggs. 
So be compassionate as your heavenly Father is compassionate with you. And that's out of the Gospel of Mark. So you know what? I'm going to put that in my basket too. Now that might fall through, so I'm going to have to put it in the corner. <laughs> okay, so um, the next thing we have is love. Oh my goodness. I guess I'm going on an egg hunt here or something. So over here, I've got a rock. Oh, I found another wisdom on the bottom of this rock. <laughs> it said, good works leave no tracks behind. And that's from the Tao Chi Chin. Isn't that no one? I guess I'm going to get a workout today because there's more stuff over here. Love. Oh, love and uh, another fortune egg. <laughs> the only way you can become free is to love those who hate you. Oh, another Buddhist saying. You know what? I'm kind of thinking I'm going to go Buddhist. I've <laughs> got a lot of good sayings. A lot of good sayings I like. I'm, I'm going to make this easy. Uh, Stella's probably going to break her neck and swing it down. <laughs> so I'm going to take it easy on it. Okay, so here's some wisdom on the bottom of this stone. It says, war is not the answer. Only love can conquer hate. And one of our absolutely fabulous songwriters wrote a song. That's a line from it. Marvin Gaye sang it originally. Mm -hmm. War is not the answer. Only love can conquer hate. I think that's some pretty good wisdom. And, oh, and so, God, those Chinese. <laughs> They're fabulous. <laughs> They also make a part of the <laughs> Okay, and now this, I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. And that's from the Gospel of John, something that Jesus said. So here we are. We're, oh, golly, man, my Easter basket's getting full here. <laughs> but how about forgiveness? Is there any forgiveness anywhere? Where, what happened to the forgiveness? Maybe the forgiveness is the forgiveness over here. You know what? I'm going to tell you a story right now. And to me, it's one of the best forgiveness stories there ever was. Or ever will be. And other religions have picked up on the, on the and, and cultures have picked up on the importance of it. And it's the story of Joseph. Now, there was the big Hollywood production, Joseph's multicolored dream coat and all that. But for all that, it was just Joseph. And Joseph was, was, was the most fortunate of his family. He was the youngest son. Um, he came into the family late in the father's life, and he was just the, the, the jewel in his eye. And he was always, well, he was always trying to do the right thing. So uh, his brothers were doing some kind of you know, dirty business, and so he goes to his dad, and he tells his dad about it, and the brothers get in trouble. And then he, he has a dream, and he tells his brothers about the dream, and, and then he has another dream, and he tells them about the dream, and, and the dream, he says in the dream, he goes, well, I was out in the field, and we were all uh, binding these sheaves, and uh, mine stood up, and all of yours bowed to me. So... He rats on him. He has these dreams, and he's kind of being kind of, you know, kind of, you know, cocky, you know, like, you know. So the brothers figure, you know what? The heck with this guy. Let's just kill him and we'll throw him in a pit. And one of the brothers says, no, 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 we can't do that. We can't, we can't just kill him and throw him in a pit. What if we just throw him in the pit? And so they kind of you know, that the, the brother who's defending him kind of leaves the area for a little bit. And so the other brothers do that. They take him and they throw him in the pit. But, you know, his, the father had given him this really nice coat for being such a wonderful son. And that really ticked the brothers off because they didn't have any nice coats like that. So they throw him in the pit. They take, they take the coat. It's, they said they put some goat's blood on it and told him, wow, the animal ate and he's gone now. So he's down in this pit. And what am I doing down in this pit? I haven't really done anything wrong. So some traders come by, and the brothers pull them up out of the pit, and they sell them to the traders, They're these traveling traders. So he's like out of the picture. And uh, 
the one brother who was defending him comes back and he goes, well, where'd he go? He says, oh man, we sold him for 20 pieces of silver. He's gone now. So he's, he has these circumstances that have come upon him and he's not sure why this is happening to him. But as fate would have it, the traders <laughs> sold him. And they sold him to a high-ranking official in, in the government in Egypt. So he's a hard worker, he's young, he's strong, he's good looking, and he's smart. So he's got it going in his way. So he starts doing uh, some really good stuff around this, the guy that bought him his house, and pretty soon he realizes how important or how smart he is, and he gives him more and more responsibility until everything, he's responsible for everything except one thing, 